Well, Jim, our next question sent on Twitter using the hashtag corny drive through from Todd Cataret. I believe is how you pronounce this name. Todd Cataret. Todd and Biff. He says, pretty sure this had to do with the NHL and not AEW. And he wants to know what you think. And he has an article here. The headline, Chris Jericho says AEW made NXT go screaming and yelling away from Wednesdays. <laughs> and some of the quotes here. Uh... I know WWE NXT was watching our stuff during the show, but this was not a war that we were ever asking for. We were kind of thrust into it by proxy. The reason why we won it, and won it so handily, is we never worried about what anybody else was doing. We just worried about our own show. I think the best thing about being unopposed is now people don't have to decide. There's been a lot of shows that we've done with some great segments and some great moments that might have been missed because people were switching back and forth. Of course, we're competitive. Yes, we wanted to beat NXT. Yes, we wanted to drive them screaming and yelling away from Wednesdays, and we did that. <clears throat> when the network said we'd like to switch the nights of your program because we got hockey. Um, and it, I guess it's I guess all's fair in love and war and business, and I can't castigate him too badly for 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 taking advantage of it and capitalizing on it and saying that, but at the same point since so many people know that it's not true, does that not look bad? Does it, if he could say it and nobody knew the reason why they switched nights for NXT, that's one thing. But when people know, and he still says that, does he not look bad? You would think, yes. I, you know, like I said, if he could capitalize on it and people didn't know, ha ha ha, well then we got one on you. But, um, does anybody switch back and forth anymore? First of all, there are DVRs. Even I can work my DVR and I never swig. I could always work a VCR. So I never switched back and forth anyway, but I know they were doing that in the attitude era, but does, does anybody switch back and forth anymore? And also the programs weren't nearly as important or compelling. The audience is so much smaller. I don't know if there was that much bopping back and forth or if it was that, they just watched whatever they decided to watch that night and maybe watched the other program on DVR. We know that a lot of the AEW fans don't like NXT, and we know a lot of the NXT people don't like AEW. And their first night unopposed, they got a, about a 50% boost in their audience, an extra 400,000 people from their normal eight or whatever. NXT usually gets six, seven. There's some people in there that just didn't. Um, it'll settle down in a few weeks. Who tu who tuned in for NXT and found out it wasn't on and switched over to AEW but won't come back? Who came in because of Tyson and won't come won't come back? Was there anybody appreciably that will now watch AEW every week just because NXT is not on that night? I don't know. Some, yes, but appreciable amounts. I don't know. I think everybody's already decided which horse they like. And there's going to get some crossover just because it's what's called wrestling, but I don't... Anyway, I don't see any major victory here for anybody. It, it They didn't beat NXT off of the night. They didn't pick choose, uh, switching the night. The network did. Um, As far as, you know... Uh, Basically, Jericho has the right to crow if he can. Like I said, it's kind of, you know, bad because it's see-through. But good Lord, um, I don't know. We'll find out if a lot of people that weren't watching it before are going to watch it now just because a program that they could have always taped if they don't wanted to see this program now isn't on opposite. I mean, is, is that going to be the entire audience? Never has been in history when a program goes away. And what else was he talking about in there? There was something else in there. Well, they was, ran them off and kicking and screaming. Well, no, there was some other statement he made that was just, I don't want you to read the whole thing again. I've lost track of it, so I'll just, we'll, we'll just move on. Yeah, I was going to say I could open it up and try to find what statement I was. don't care that much. 
Okay. <laughs> I, I finally get the article back up and you don't care. All right. Well, what else did he say? There was something else in there he said that was a little screwy. I know WWE NXT was watching our stuff that's, during that's their show. What it, that's what it was. That, again, yeah, that may be true, but here's the deal. This started 20 years ago. And because the WWE has not only an incredible production team, but the biggest plethora of equipment and trucks and crew and et cetera, they can do anything. They started, it's, it was the same thing on the WCW side in the Attitude Era. WCW and their truck was watching WWF. WWF and their truck had a monitor and had the WW or WCW feed on. I assume that they still do that anytime that one of their programs is opposite another wrestling program. But in this case, that doesn't mean to that they're sitting there reacting to it. Whereas in the Attitude Era days, you know, Vince would be sitting there and somebody would have an ear on it. And if something was said that they could react to, they would do it. Um, and vice versa. Remember the uh, Tony Schiavone being fed the line, oh, that'll put the butts in the seats when Mick Foley wins the title. Well, Bischoff told him to say that and again, it backfired. But that's because they were watching the program in their truck. But nobody was reacting to or uh, uh, modifying the show because of something that was going on on AEW this time around. So I'm sure they were monitoring it. And I'm also sure that there was one guy probably sitting there bored and occasionally, occasionally tickled, but they didn't change anything about the program they were doing just because they were, they had a monitor on in the truck. So that's a little misleading. Snip. <laughs> I saw them jousting back and forth with each other. I even saw TNA jousting 10 or 15 years ago with them back and forth on some of the TNA tapings. Remember when the fucking idiot Highlander came in WrestleMania weekend and sat in the TNA crowd? And we were down in the middle of a, of a taping. We were down for a tape change or some re-rack of something. And one of the guys in the truck that knew him said, well, that's that fucking what you call it. And Jeff Jarrett said, no, you're shitting me. WrestleMania weekend, WrestleMania was in Orlando, and one of their actual guys that they were using on camera came over and sat in our audience. So Jeff immediately made the call. I can pop that goddamn shot up there when we come back from this break. And there was a crowd shot, and they identified him by his real name. They Somebody looked up his real name. I can't remember what it is now, but not his wrestling name, because that's copyrighted, and that would be owned, but his real name. Well, there's so-and-so, Biff Brown. He's enjoying the matches just like everybody else here. And they ended up firing the guy, as they should have, because he was a fucking idiot. Who does that? And I think he, he tried to tell him the story was that he – he brought they were in at Universal Studios for with his family, his kids or whatever, and he just brought him in to see some of the matches. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Guys get in the business that, that <laughs> they're not trained anymore. Nobody teaches them a goddamn thing. They don't get the fucking picture. And then they oh yeah, it was like, well, Morella. He was laughing. Well, my, my kid was here, and I thought that he was playing a joke for my kid to be entertained. No, we don't entertain fucking kids here of goddamn employees. It's a fucking business, you morons. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> Just the things that wrestlers do these days and don't understand when they're fucking up is amazing to me.